Hello Frontline Teach, this is Val. I want to spend some time talking with you about metabolic complications. Uh, talk about your math full of a word. Um, the core concept here is metabolism. Um, and metabolism uh, gets thrown around a lot, particularly in uh, scammy advertising. Uh, increase your metabolism with the secret formula. Um, you we run across this phrase a lot, but it's difficult to know what it means. Um, it's defined as all of the chemical and physical changes in the body that keep it functioning. Um, and so this includes a whole bunch of stuff. Energy levels, hunger and digestion, the way that muscles get built or fat gets stored, our hormone levels, our libido or our lack of libido, when we feel tired, when we feel like waking up, all of these things are linked to metabolism. So obviously it's complicated. It happens, metabolism happens through chemical messengers in the body. Um, and these are generally referred to as hormones. When when we say hormones, most people think of sex hormones, um, but there are a lot of things that count as hormones that don't have anything to do with sex. Um, and metabolism is a, is a chemical chain. It's like a messenger from one organ goes in the bloodstream down to the next organ, which triggers the next organ to have a response and send a messenger down to the next organ. So it's this chain back and forth, organs and tissues all over the body. It's a, it's a symphony that happens 24-7. We don't even think about it. Um, the reason that we talk about this in HIV education is that it HIV affects the whole body and so it can interfere with proper hormonal functioning throughout the body um, and then when you add in the HIV meds uh, we have a potential recipe for trouble so um, this uh, the first part of this will be kind of an overview and then I'll probably get into some symptoms of metabolic complications and I anticipate that there will have to be a second video to talk about the different uh, sort of causes or treatments. Um, so uh, all of the functionings of the um, metabolic system are sort of encapsulated by the endocrine system, system and you can see how many places in the body this affects. Um, the, all of these organs and glands um, produce hormones and it's a great big mix and match. Um, all people have all of the sex specific hormones in different proportions. So um, men, women, trans people all have androgens, testosterone, and estrogen in different proportions. So the sort of common conception is like, oh, men have testosterone and women have estrogen and trans people, we don't know what they have. Oh. Um, uh, and actually it's far more complicated than that and everybody has some mixture of all of these things. So we've talked about sex specific hormones, um, but um, the there's sort of two main categories of hormones. So steroid hormones are derived from cholesterol and these are all examples of steroids. Testosterone, androgen, estrogens, progesterone, cortisol. These are made by the gonads and by the adrenal glands. Um, and then there are peptides and amines aka everything else. Um, so some examples of that are insulin, growth hormone, melatonin, um, and these are made by the other places in the endocrine system, pituitary gland, thyroid, heart, liver, and kidneys. Um, obviously I can't, uh, in this presentation, take you through all of the different things that all of these organs do, and the, the point of this is not to say, this is, this is this hormone and this is what it does, this is this hormone and this is what it does contact me if you need more information about all of that stuff. Um, so we know that a lot of people living with HIV have metabolic changes um, and we've noticed that since the start of the epidemic. Um, uh, people living with HIV have noticed changes in the body such as redistribution of fat and irregular metabolism. Um, and these changes became more dramatic after 1996 when people started taking highly active antiretroviral therapy 
with protease inhibitors. Um, so recent reports from Bangkok, not so recent now, I think this was from the 2004 AIDS conference, indicate that all heart regimens carry some risk of blocking arteries, which is another sort of metabolic complication. So um, uh, we want to talk, we talked in the um, sort of general health maintenance piece about the difference between symptoms and causes, um, but we're just doing a little bit of review here. What is a symptom and what is a cause? Um, symptoms are the things that you notice about a disease, so or about anything um, that you notice about a side effect. Um, a symptom could be an upset stomach, right? But all upset stomachs are not from the same thing. Some upset stomachs are caused by stress. Some upset stomachs are caused by food poisoning. Some upset stomachs are caused by side effects from meds. So a symptom is not always linked to the same cause, and that can be hard to remember because um, we're humans and we look for patterns. Um, so here's a list of some of the symptoms of metabolic changes. Okay, lipodystrophy, lab work irregularities, heart disease, diabetes, mitochondrial toxicity, decreased sex drive, low self-esteem. Okay, that's a hell of a list. We'll see what we can get through um, in the next few minutes here. So one symptom that's sort of the most highly noticeable symptom of metabolic changes in people living with HIV is fat redistribution or lipodystrophy. Um, basically body shape change. Um, and so going to the root words, as I always like to do, lipo means fat, dis means bad, um, and trophy equals growth. So it's bad fat growth um, here is lipodystrophy. Um, and lipodystrophy is actually a syndrome um, because it's not a single symptom, but a group of symptoms. And so see, these are some of the, um, this is the working definition that's been created around lipodystrophy. Um, created in 1999, um, and it's pretty stood the test of time pretty well. Lipodystrophy can be diagnosed if someone has HIV and one or more of the following symptoms. I mean, there are other things that cause bad fat growth, right? But um, when we're talking about HIV, we don't want to just well, rent, diagnose lipodystrophy when it doesn't apply. Um, so, but lipodystrophy can be diagnosed from the following symptoms, one or more of the following. Sunken cheeks in the face, increase of fat in the face, prominent veins in the legs that aren't due to weightlifting or muscle building, um, loss of fat in arms and le legs, so this has a note, lipoatrophy, so lipo meaning fat, trophy meaning growth, and a means absence of, so there's not enough fat in the arms and legs, or loss of it, loss of shape in the butt, um, an increase in fat around the gut, um, and this isn't the soft, jiggly fat that's fun to play with, um, but hard fat that's behind your abdominal muscles, um, uh, visceral fat. Uh, breast enlargement, a fat pad on the back of the neck, lipomas or fatty growths in different parts of the body, um, and irregularities in blood work. Uh, so all of these are things that you don't have to have all of these, and most people don't have all of these, um, but one or more of the following can lead to a diagnosis of lipodystrophy, um, and we'll talk a bit later about the uh, sort of treatments for lipodystrophy. So another symptom, irregularities in blood work. Um, we can see changes in lab results, uh, increases in triglycerides, changes in cholesterol levels, and we often see an increase in LDL um, and a decrease in HDL. And the LDL, the way that I remember this is that H means healthy and L means lousy. I mean, it means something else that I don't remember off the top of my head. I'd have to go look up. But the that HDL is healthy cholesterol, and it actually helps to scrub out the bad type of cholesterol. Um, but some of the changes that we see in blood work uh, are actually a decrease in the um, cholesterol that scrubs the other kind. We can see the start of insulin resistance or diabetes. We can see elevated blood pressure, and we can see lo lowered testosterone. Uh, that's as much as I can fit into this presentation. I'll catch you after the jump.